Good morning. Please join in our opening song number 680, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. Song number 680. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. You are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord, 
draw near to your servants and answer their prayers with unceasing kindness, that for those who glory in you as their creator and guide, you may restore what you have created and keep safe what you have restored. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. <clears throat> Thus says the Lord, all you who are thirsty, come to the water. You who have no money, come receive grain and eat. Come without paying and without cost, drink wine and milk. Why spend your money for what is not bread, your wages for what fails to satisfy? Feed me, and you shall eat well, you shall delight in rich fare. Come to me heedfully, listen, that you may have life. I will renew with you the everlasting covenant, the benefits assured to David the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm, the hand of the Lord feeds us, he answers all our needs. The, the hand, hand of, of the, the Lord, Lord feeds us, us. He, he answers all our needs. needs. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is good to all and compassionate toward all his works. The, Lord, the hand of the, the Lord, Lord feeds us, us. He, he answers. answers all our needs. The eyes of all look hopefully to you, and you give them their food in due season. You open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. The hand of the Lord feeds us. He answers all our needs. The hand of the Lord feeds the just. The Lord is just in all his ways and holy in all his works. The Lord is near to all who call upon him, to all who call upon him in truth. The hand of the Lord feeds us, he answers all our needs. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans, brothers and sisters. What will separate us from the love of Christ? Will anguish or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or the sword? No, in all these things we conquer overwhelmingly through him who loved us. For I'm convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor present things, nor future things, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. With you. And with your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus heard of the death of John the Baptist, he withdrew in a boat 
to a deserted place by himself. The crowds heard of this and followed him on foot from their towns. When he disembarked and saw the vast crowd, his heart was moved with pity for them, and he cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples approached him and said, this is a deserted place and it is already late. Dismiss the crowds so that they can go to the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, there is no need for them to go away. Give them some food yourselves. But they said to him, five loaves and two fish are all we have here? Then he said, bring them here to me. And he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass, taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he said the blessing, broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples who in turn gave them to the crowds. They all ate and were satisfied and they picked up the fragments left over, 12 wicker baskets full. Those who ate were about 5,000 men, not counting women and children. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Long time ago, I read this little story. A minister who, before he began his preaching, would bow his hands in silence and pray. His little daughter noticed her father doing this, and she said, Daddy, what are you doing before you deliver the sermon? And he said, child, he said, I pray to God to help me to give a good sermon. And the child, as young as she was, she was sort of a, a little smarty, and she looked at her daddy with confidence, and she said, Daddy, why doesn't God help you to do it? Why doesn't God help you to do it? Seriously, this child already figured out something important about prayer. God doesn't always answer in a uniform way. She already figured out that prayer is not like a vending machine. You press the button and you get the result. Probably this is a lesson that all of us at some point throughout our lives, we have to learn to be patient and to be waiting so that God answers in his own time and in his own way to our prayers. In today's first reading, it's an illustration which is out of context with our experience, but centuries before Christ, the chosen people were in exile in refugee camps, and the message came to them through the prophet, the time of suffering is over. I want you to return to your homeland, to your villages and towns, start rebuilding plant crops and olives and on and on. 
I have forgiven you. I'm blessing you again the way I promised to our ancestor, King David. God's goodness, whether we know it or not, is boundless. The gospel tell, testifies to this experience. Let's hear the numbers again. 5,000 men, not counting children and the women. Possibly there were 10,000 people, a vast crowd. Jesus provoked his apostles. He said, you give them something to eat. He knew that they didn't have anything. He did that to provoke them to believe in him in more, to trust him. They, ha they have witnessed miracles already. He wanted them to turn to him for help. And the gospel tells us that out of that little that they had, everyone was fed and a great deal of things were left over. God's goodness is boundless, but he wants us to have faith in him, to trust him, and to wait for the response. In my mind, the closest we come to the way God treats us in prayer are the wise, parents. Parents act towards their children very much in the way that God considers us when we pray to him. Wise parents learn how to discern what's really necessary for the good of the child, the time, the place, and so forth, isn't it? Parents who throw all the material things at their children are not good parents. They are creating a catastrophe for their children. Wise parents, they know that they are there in place of God. And they discern and they give all those good things in a measured way. The lesson of today's reading is that even more generous, God is toward us. Years ago, I was going to the west side in the evening to a wedding reception, and I noticed a mile long line of cars moving towards West 25th exit. Clearly they were going to some sports game. I thought about it. Here are the sports enthusiasts. They're loyal and trusting. And time after time they keep returning hoping that this might be a winning game. Nothing deters them. Even though they experience disappointments and they gripe and this and that, they are ready to spend time and treasure. And though they might be disappointed, they keep hoping. They keep hoping that they will be there at the game when there is a success. We have much to learn in our prayer. 
to turn our things, our life, and so on, into God's hands. And to see God's writing, even in difficult times, moments in the family, but also in the difficult times that we are experiencing. The final conclusion of what we're experiencing, or any person personally or in the family, is not written yet. I remember years ago, the older people, the old parishioners, would tell me that some of the happiest times they experienced in their life was during the hardship times in this country and for the families. And the happiness didn't come from material things or anything of that sort. The happiness came because they felt that they were together as a family, friends, parish, relationships. And that experience trumped over any hurts or disappointments that they experienced in those times of hardship. And they remembered that God was good to them when they needed him. Amen. Please stand. We prayed the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, crucified, died, and was buried, he descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Amen. Brothers and sisters, every good gift comes from the Father of light, full of confidence. We pray and we respond, Lord, hear our prayer. Today we pray for the Holy Father, for our bishops and priests, and all those who serve the church, that they may continually strive for spiritual progress of all our lives. We pray to the Lord for the world and national leaders, that they may guide us with wise and understanding decisions, we pray to the Lord. The hungry and the homeless and the sick may find generous response of help from Christians and those around them, we pray to the Lord. That we may grow in the realization that Christian life demands service to others in imitation of Christ we pray to the Lord. For the vacationers, may they return home rested and refreshed and stronger in the ties of family love, we pray to the Lord. For all those who have asked us to remember them today in their prayers, especially members of our families, friends, and parishioners, we pray to the Lord. That all our deceased parishioners may find the gracious God awaiting them in eternity and ex being accepted into eternal happiness, we pray to the Lord. And for our own petitions in the silence of our hearts. Heavenly Father, you are all knowing. Help us to pray with humility and trust. Transform us all and lift us up through the experience of love from one another. We ask this as we ask everything through Christ our Lord. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May, may the Lord, Lord accept, accept the sacrifice from their hands, hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our, our good, good and the good of all his holy church. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and gave him thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. A similar way when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Edward, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember all the deceased members of the Malik, Primozik, and Gaidelis families, whom you have called from this world to yourself, grant that they who were united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our other brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection, our deceased parishioners, family members, benefactors, souls in purgatory, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. 
have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Spouse St. Joseph, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. With faith and confidence, we pray to our Heavenly Father as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days then by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. For the King. Lord Jesus Christ who said to your apostles peace I leave you my peace I give you Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live in vain forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. We stop each other's sign of God's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. This is Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
the body of Christ. Just a reminder, when approaching Holy Communion, uh, be mindful of the distance that we're asked to keep from one another for the sake of our neighbor. The body of Christ. Communion hymn is number 537, Taste and See.
we have a short litany of thanksgiving today, and the response is, we thank you, Lord. For the many blessings you have given us throughout our lives, we say, we thank you, Lord. For our families and friends, we say, we thank you, Lord. For our homes and our neighborhood and the security we enjoy, we thank you, Lord. For being the rock of our salvation and of our life, we thank you, Lord for all those who care for the sick and for their neighbors in this time of need, we say. We thank you, Lord. For allowing us to worship you this Sunday. We thank you, Lord. For calling us to be your, your holy people. We thank you, Lord. For the happy days of summer and the days to come. We thank you, Lord. For blessing our parish with so many good things throughout our history. We thank you, Lord. For the gift of this Holy Eucharist. We thank you, Lord. Let us pray. O oh Lord, accompany us with constant protection, those you renew with these heavenly gifts and in your never failing care for them, make them worthy of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Please bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May God bless you with every heavenly blessing, make you always holy and pure in his sight, pour out in abundance upon you the riches of his glory, and teach you with the words of truth. May he instruct you in the gospel of salvation and ever endow you with fraternal charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks. Have a very peaceful and a blessed Sunday, everybody. The closing song is number 525, I Am the Bread of Life, number 525. <laughs> Bread.